Okay, this is version two of uh, my video trying to answer the question, is Linux Unix? There's debate out there in the community about that. I'm going to attempt to answer that question with, uh, with a little history lesson. So if you'll bear with me, I'm going to throw up a slide and I'll get to that right now. Okay, what we're looking at here is the Unix family tree. Now, the Unices that we have today, uh, their pedigree is actually much more complex than this. This is extremely simplistic. Down at the bottom of the slide, uh, there's a link to, uh, uh, to the page where I got this information. Now, a little bit of history. Unix started back in 1969 when a researcher at Bell Labs decided that he wanted to play some games on an unused computer they had laying around the lab. Uh, so uh, he wrote an operating system for it. Uh, now, when it, Linux was or when Unix was originally written, it was written in machine code for that machine architecture, which is the way all operating systems were written. A couple years later, a buddy of his suggested that uh, they rewrite it, re-implement it in a high-level programming language, namely C. Now, what that did was it allowed the operating system itself to be portable to other architectures. They released this operating system in the form of a manual, including all the C source code, uh, to the scientific and academic communities. Uh, at the University of California at Berkeley, they got a hold of it. They wrote extensions to it, uh, heavily modified it, uh, released those changes out to back out to the scientific academic community. And basically, by 78, 79, you had ver two very distinct flavors of Unix floating around out there. You had the BSD flavor, which was more academic, scientific oriented. You had uh, the version 7 family, which was a little bit more uh, commercial oriented. That's not to say that commercial entities didn't take the BSD code. They did. Uh, but BSD was very influential uh, and continues to be even to this day. As a matter of fact, uh, the TCP IP stack that you'll find in almost any operating systems out there, to include Windows operating systems, uh, actually came from BSD code. Now, the situation where you have today is there are still, uh, Unix is still alive and well, and the two family branches are still alive and well in commercially sold and commercially successful operating systems. OS 10. Apple's operating system is derived, traces its lineage back to BSD. Solaris operating system uh, that you'll find in, in uh, Sun products is uh, derived from uh, the V7 uh, line. Okay, so that sort of begs the question, uh, if Linux did not descend from the AT&T Bell Labs Unix, then where did it come from? Well, Linux actually had its genesis uh, around 1983 when an idealistic uh, young research assistant at uh, MIT's AI lab by the name of Richard Stallman decided that there should be a free operating system, as in free of cost, freely redistributable, freely modifiable, uh, available for everyone in the spirit of, say, BSD Unix. Of course, by that time, BSD had been encumbered by uh, licensing issues, which Stallman found uh, objectionable. So he wanted to re-implement uh, Unix. And what he was going to call his system uh, was uh, GNU, uh, which is a recursive uh, acronym, uh, because Stallman finds recursive acronyms funny uh, for GNUs, not Unix. OK. so. He gets some volunteers, he gets to work, he, he writes the user space tools, he writes a C compiler, uh, basically gets everything together uh, you need for an operating system, but he didn't have a kernel. He did not have an OS kernel. Now also in uh, the late 80s, early 90s, a computer science professor by the name of Andrew Tannenbaum, I think he's in the Netherlands somewhere, uh, created a uh, Unix clone. Uh, for the 286 architecture called Xenix. And uh, now, and he wrote it for academic, you know, to teach operating system design. Well, 
a student in at think at the University of Helsinki by the name of Linus Torvalds. About that time, 92, 93, he got a hold of a 386 computer and he wanted to learn basically the ins and outs of that 386 processor. And Minix did not meet his needs. So he started working on an OS kernel which came to be known as Linux. And basically he got the tool set, the, the GNU tool set, uh, the C compiler, the user land stuff, and he put that together, and it's just sort of snowball from from there. Now, in my next video, I'll kind of show there's all kinds of Linux distributions out there, and I'll I'll, I'll try to kind of show some of those that Linux family tree. But uh, so anyway, family wise, genetically, Linux is not Unix. Okay, it, it doesn't share well. Maybe it does share some code, but it's not. It's not in. It's not. It doesn't really belong in the Unix family tree. It's not descended from BSD. It's not descended from V7. It's sort of its own thing. But it's sort of its own thing. Sort of like uh, California sparkling wine is its own thing from champagne, from real champagne. They both bubble. They both taste the same. They're both sweet. But California sparkling wine is not champagne. Okay, it's very similar. It's made in a very similar process, but it's still not champagne. Sort of like Linux. It's very similar. Has the same file structure, file system structure, the same sort of philosophy behind it. But that's basically the relationship uh, of Linux to Unix. So it depends on how you look at it. A lot of people drink California sparkling wine and say, "Hey, it's champagne." And yeah, no, not really, but most people, you know, a lot of people wouldn't know the difference. So, anyway, uh, stay tuned. I'm going to redo the Linux video so the uh, sound isn't as bad, and stay tuned.